Rachel and I'm the Programs and Events Coordinator here at the Manassas Museum and I welcome you to our first installment of Hands-On History. Each week we'll be bringing you a short craft video focused on some aspect of local Manassas history. So we look forward to you joining us. This week we're going to focus on our temporary exhibit, the um, Native Legacy the, about the Potomac Indians of Virginia. The Potomac Indians are still in our area today. They live and thrive in Stafford. Um, but this exhibit focuses more on uh, around the time when Euro Europeans first came to this country. So around the 1600s. And today we're gonna focus on our craft on um, one of the most important tools to uh, the Potomac Indians which were pots and pottery. So today we are going to make our own pinch pots. So get your supplies, get ready, and meet me in the craft room. Welcome to the Manassas Museum craft room, also known as our conference room. This is where we're gonna be making a lot of our crafts. We're also gonna make crafts in other places around the city. But today we're gonna to be making our pinch pots right at a table. We have um, very minimal supplies today. I'm going to be using uh, polymer clay, um, like Sculpey or any kind of polymer clay that you can get at a craft store or online. Uh, you can also, for smaller fingers um, with not who haven't quite become experts at their fine motor skills. You can use air dry clay such as Model Magic. And if you don't happen to have any clay in your house and you aren't buying things online right now, you could make your own clay. There are lots of uh, recipes online for how to make your own air dry clay um, or, or clay that can be baked in an oven. Um, and there are also lots of videos for clay that can be made from dirt in your own backyard. So if you've got a real go-getter in your family, maybe think about making that kind of clay. But like I said today, I'm going to use a polymer clay and we are going to make pinch pots in two different styles. We're going to make these coil pots that will be pinched and we will make pinch pots, traditional pinch pots. So the pot that I was holding in the exhibit out front is was a coil pot at one time that was then pinched to make it watertight and to be able to hold more things. So the Potomac Indians uh, would have, around that time, would have had to make or find anything they needed and for their lives. So they didn't have a container store up the street where they could go buy Tupperware. So they had to make and find clay pots in order to store all of their goods, everything from food to textiles to anything you can imagine. So today we're going to make some pots of our own. You can make them whatever size you want, uh, depending on how much time and how many materials you have. Um, I just love tiny little things, so I made tiny little pots. They're great for holding little pieces of jewelry. Um, they're great for holding office supplies, things like that. So this is my example of what mine will look like. You'll need to start off with your polymer clay and you can, you'll have a, or whatever clay you have, you'll have a block and you can just separate it into same sized chunks. Once you've separated into the same size chunks, you can, you'll need to make these long coils. So first just kind of squish your chunk down and then set it down. I've made myself a little placemat here so I remember to contain my creativity to this placemat. And now you're going to spread your fingers evenly apart and place even uh, pressure on your piece of clay and just roll gently back and forth. You hardly even need to press down at all. You're just gonna roll gently back and forth. Make sure once it starts getting longer that you go from end to end. Now these coils can be as long or as short as you want them to be, as fat or as skinny as you want them to be. It's up to you, you are the artist. So 
we're gonna take this coil or this long piece of what's to be coil and we're going to make this into the base of our pot. So we're gonna fold it in and coil it up. We're just gonna roll it like a roly poly up onto itself until we have a base about the size of a nickel. The next thing we're gonna do, and again, this one's about the size of a nickel because I like small things. So it's up to you how big you make your base. It's up to you and your supplies, how big you make your, your base. So next, this clay in particular is very sticky. So we're just going to place our next coil on and just keep coiling around and around and around. Just You just have to very lightly touch it into place. I'm really just touching it to guide it and not so much to um, press it. I'm just guiding it to make a circle. So we keep going around and around and around. I'm gonna add one more coil to make this a little taller. And then when we've made it a little taller, we're going to pinch it to make it solid so that it'll stick together. So we're gonna go around again, just using my fingers to guide it more than pressing. I'm just making sure it lands in the right spot. And there we've got a tiny little pinch pot. What do you think we should have used that for? Hmm, I think that would hold paper clips nicely. Oh, you know what? I think it would even hold toothpicks nicely. So in order for us to make it as sturdy as it can be, we're gonna pinch those coils together to make sure they're really stuck together. So just take your fingers and press gently. You can pick it up if you want to and really give it a good press. Sometimes, once you've really given it a good press with your fingers to make sure your coils aren't gonna come off, sometimes I like to flatten out the coils a little bit by rolling them on my placemat. And I give it a little bit more pressure here to just really sort of flatten those coils out just a bit. Now you don't have to do this part if you don't want to, if you're not worried about it falling apart. It is good to make sure that your coils don't come apart just to smush them a little bit. So I'm just gonna stick my pinky down there and smush the base down a little bit. And here we have our little coil pot. Now you can see on my sample that I made here that I added some embellishments. I added some extras and you can do that too. You could take some of your coils that you've made and make additional art with them and add that to your pot. Just make sure to press it on really well like we pressed the other things on. Give it a little pinch to make sure it stays in place. You could even, if you have clay of different colors, you could braid different colors together if you like and then put those around the top or you could put different colored braids or coils in the middle and then keep adding to that. Here, I'll throw one on just so you can see what that might look like. And then with this particular clay that I've used, once you're done making your pot, you will put it in an oven to dry it out and harden it. And then you can do anything you want with it. It will be safe to use and dry and durable. So it goes from being soft and moldable like this to being hard and durable like that. All right, so we finished our coil pot and next up we're gonna make a pinch pot. So to do that, you need a ball of clay about the size of the middle of your hand. You can do it bigger if you'd like. Um, you could do it the size of the whole palm of your hand if you'd like. Um, again, I like small things, so I'm gonna use a small ball of clay. And it just needs to be um, kind of ball-ish. It doesn't have to be a perfect sphere. So we're gonna get our kind of ball-ish here. And then once you've got it in the shape that looks good to you, 
you are gonna take a finger or thumb and just press a hole into the middle of it. And then keep pressing. And then once you've got that hole in the middle, you're just gonna start pinching the sides up and in. So just keep pinching those sides up and in. This hand, my left hand, is just for holding and your right hand or your dominant hand is doing the pinching and you're pinching up and in. And I'm using my index finger and my thumb. You can use more fingers if you want. If little fingers are doing this, they might use all their fingers to do this pinching and you're just pinching up and in and up and in. This is about the most simple pot you can make takes no time at all. You can take all your time to use something like a toothpick or a paper clip and you can make, you can score designs into it if you'd like before you bake it in the oven. And then when you're done, you bake it in the oven. Once you've made it all the designs you want, you bake it in the oven for a little while. It's a, it takes about 10 minutes to bake till it gets hard. And then if you'd like to take markers or paints, you can, you can color the outside if you're not using colored clay. And that is it for our simple and easy pinch pots. So join me next week on Hands On History when we are celebrating Museum Week by making our own museums.